Hello, and welcome to Man's Model Moment. Last week, Airfix made the announcement of their 2024 range, and I did a quick review on those, noting my disappointment at what I felt wasn't the same high-impact set of releases that we've enjoyed over the past couple of years. Now, I was a little surprised at some of the comments in that video, which ranged from people talking about how they liked what was released, through views that any critique of a launch is heresy, to explaining why the Bristol Bulldog was so well known by everyone, which of course is just plain wrong. As I've mentioned before, I'm an evidence-based scientist at heart, so I wanted to gather data rather than just espouse a personal feeling, so I put up this post on the channel just to see what others' honest views were, and you can still vote on that if you want. As you can see, a small majority of people agreed that whilst a good release, it did feel a little disappointing. Though there was also a contingent, only a little smaller than that, who thought the release was as good as prior years, which seemed to perfectly echo the respective positions that Moss and I held. Armed with that knowledge, I want to explain to everyone why a lot of people may have felt this was a disappointing announcement, without being tribalistic or saying that this is a bad release and tolling the bell of demise for Airfix. So to start off with that, I'm going to go back to 2022 and the Airfix release announcement, which was the first year I started this channel, and it was a significant landmark year for Airfix as well. The announcement started off with a Gloucester Meteor in 172nd scale, and I'm only going to talk about new toolings here, as they make the most significant impacts on our impressions of a company's innovation and investment in the hobby. Re-releases are all well and good, but they're not really what gets a model as glue flowing. Next up is the gorgeous 148 scale Anson, and so World War II 172nd and 148th modelers were given nice goodies here. The 148th Buccaneer then gave the larger scale Cold War jet enthusiasts a nice chunk to get their teeth into too. The reason I mentioned 2022 as a landmark year is because of this announcement, the 124th scale Spitfire Mark IX, which blew a lot of people away, including myself, and really pushed Airfix to the forefront in a lot of modellers' minds, who had dismissed them for years. It put Airfix very firmly in the spotlight, and it has incredible detail and UK-based manufacture. Now if aircraft weren't your thing, or you were just starting out in modelling, Airfix also had three brand new starter kits in 143rd scale. As modellers just had the 135th scale KT arrive from the 2021 range as well, this felt like a pretty balanced spread. In fact, in total, Airfix released nine new tools in 2022, quite evenly split between aircraft and vehicles across a variety of scales, and kits with new parts and re-releases, which were biased towards aircraft, but still having a quarter of other subjects within them. In total, 42 kits were released by Airfix in 2022. Remember that number, it'll come up again. Now note that I am not counting quick build kits or figures in any of these numbers, since neither of those are normal model kits with the same broad appeal for styrene stickers. Quick build kits might have their proponents, but they're really designed for the pre-model maker as a gateway to the hobby, and they're far more like toys than actual model kits. Likewise, one-piece flexible plastic figures are not construction kits, though I understand their appeal and utility in modelling. They're not the same as styrene figures, for instance, that require assembly, so I've excluded them from all of the following analyses. So 2022 was a bumpy year for Airfix. What of 2023? Well, Airfix didn't disappoint us, with another big kit of an unusual subject, similar to the Anson in 2022, but for Cold War modellers. Beginners to the hobby were not neglected, as Airfix have been specifically catering for them over the past years, which is a great strategy, and also one that they should be commended for. Starting that off was a new 172nd scale F-35. For vehicle modellers, we got a 143rd scale Land Rover, something that has huge appeal and was a very canny choice. We then got a further three 143rd scale car releases, with two modern supercars and a classic DB5 sports car, made famous of course by Sean Connery's James Bond in Goldfinger. In fact, last year was very heavy in the vehicle department, with the Ferret Scout Mark II and the Bedford truck both coming in 135th scale for the World War II and Cold War armour modeller. With a further three kits with new parts and 25 reissues, that left a slightly light release schedule from 2022, but then no one expected a Spitfire equivalent, and it was still a very healthy lineup with a good spread of scales, periods, subjects, and required skills. So a drop of 
about 15% in the range wasn't a big deal. Of course, Airfix weren't done with this, and despite this solid lineup, the surprise announcement started with a brand new Seeking, followed it by some reissues, and then wrapping up with a new ME410 at scale model world. In the end, Airfix released 42 kits across 2023, exactly the same as in 2022, but skewed towards the new end of things rather than simple reissues, which is a good and welcome evolution. Now we come to last week and the 2024 announcement. We started off with three new starter kits, all of aircraft and all in 172nd scale. Not only that, all of the aircraft were already in the range in some form, the most divergent being the ME109F. We then moved to full kits and another 172nd aircraft, the Chinook. Airfix had, like almost everyone else, previously reboxed the Italieri kit. Matchbox made one back in the day, and most recently, Trumpeter released one in 2008, so whilst I am sure this will be welcomed by many helicopter modellers, it isn't exactly a gap in the market. We then got our first 148 scale aircraft, the Bulldog. Now this certainly fits Airfix's penchant for the occasional oddball release, but being an interwar biplane, this won't be a very big kit so it's more equivalent to a modern 172nd jet or a World War II heavy fighter like the ME410 than a true 148 scale kit. Following that is the 172nd Liberator, something I thought they might release, but not as the flagship release for the year. Saving the new tools being wholly aircraft was the RNLI Lifeboat starter set, another unusual, though not unwelcome kit, and injecting a bit of difference to the release. So with three kits featuring new parts and 17 reissues, we are left with a rather anemic set of 27 kits compared to the prior two years' 42, a reduction of 40%. Now of course this is comparing the January announcement to the final releases of 2023, which isn't really fair, so let's adjust and compare apples to apples with the January release from 2023. Doing that, we're still a quarter down on the year's announcements, and the balance of scale and subjects of the prior two years is absent, and that is why, in a nutshell, I felt this release was disappointing. Now, before some bright spark makes the same tired accusation, no, it wasn't because the releases didn't cater to my particular modelling niche. Because 172nd scale World War II aircraft modelling is very much where I started my journey and still holds a huge place for my natural draw. No, I'm trying to look at this from a broad perspective. Where are the range of scales? Where are the vehicles? Other years have had a much more balanced output. Now I also get that Airfix will be making more announcements during the year, but this is the big reveal. This is what goes into your printed catalogue for the next 12 months, and is how you get people excited. And from what I see, and the poll, they've missed the mark with about half of the modelling community. Now we can make some guesses about those announcements, but even if they double the number from last year, I don't see them redressing the balance. So let's just play with some numbers here. If we say that Airfix make two new tool announcements in 2024, like they did in 2023, and they're both some sort of vehicle, and they also add parts to a couple more kits, say a 148 scale aircraft and a 135 scale vehicle, that gets us to equity on the kits with new parts, and let's say they double the announcement of reissues with two aircraft and two vehicles. That would get us to 25 aircraft, six vehicles, and a total of 35 kit releases for the year, still down from the prior two years. In fact, we'd need 15 surprise announcements, more than one a month to get parity with 2023, and I just can't see that happening. In addition, it still doesn't give us a very even spread across different categories. So that is part of the explanation, but that is purely comparing Airfix to itself in prior years. As a prior sales director once said to me, if you're not growing at least the same as your competitors, you're being left behind. So let's look at a couple of other companies. To start off, I'm going to have a look at Ravel, probably the most direct competitor to Airfix in terms of history, size and brand awareness. Now I've criticised Ravel heavily in the past for both its continuous practice of reboxing older kits without any clarity or price differential, and it's also had quite a stagnant range if you exclude those releases it's just reboxing from other manufacturers. 
Ravel haven't made their official announcement for the whole of 2024 yet, but they do have Quarter 1 announcements and other release data available, which, whilst not complete, gives us an indication of this year. So we know that Ravel will be releasing a new F-35A in 172nd scale. There's the delayed 132nd scale Meteor from 2023, as well as the new tool speeder bike to bolster the growing Star Wars collection. There's the one 144 scale U-boat that was slated for 2023, and then several 125th scale vehicles, including some tied to the Stranger Things franchise. So that actually looks like a pretty strong and quite well balanced lineup for 2023. You have air, land, sea, and space represented across seven new tools, as well as a further seven kits with new parts and 42 reissues. That's already pretty respectable, but with a few more kits with new parts, they're up to the approximately 60 releases that they put out on average each year, with a stronger bias towards those newer tools, which again is a welcome change from prior years. Now I'm not going to speak to a quality comparison between Airfix and Ravel in 2024, but Ravel appear to have a much more rounded set of releases planned for the year. They're covering modern and World War II subjects, and also recognisable subjects from popular franchises. To be honest, I'm looking at more items from Ravel's new tools this year than I am from Airfix. Now let's change gear a little and look at a company that I and others are increasingly talking about. ICM. Now, they don't have the global recognition of the two former companies, but Ravel is boxing several of their kits as its own. Their release output was almost the same as Airfix in 2022 and surpassed them in 2023, and they're getting a name for producing excellent kits and innovating in ways other companies aren't. Now ICM are due to release their catalogue for 2024 shortly, but they also do monthly release announcements, so we have some advanced insights for the year, and we can do a bit of logical extrapolation based on those and prior numbers. One thing you can say about ICM as well is that they both do a broad range of often unusual subjects, from figures to submarines, and in a range of scales too. You can also see from their kits with new parts numbers that they are very good at reimagining kits in different forms, rather than just doing straight reissues. This can be seen in their January 2024 announcements, where they have released the 135th scale FWD World War I truck as an ammunition variant, the 148th scale JU-88 as the P variant tank buster, their 124 scale German G4 personnel car as a version with MG34s and complete with German staff personnel, and the 132nd scale Gladiator 1 as a Sea Gladiator Mark II with Royal Navy pilots. Their new tool for January is a set of 135th scale female soldiers to add to their current range of Ukrainian servicemen, which I'll talk more extensively about in a future video. Now these are all in one month, and it looks like we'll be getting a similar breakdown to follow, which bodes well for a 2024 set of releases. But again, this shows a broad release set of scales, subjects and genres, which was really lacking in Airfix's announcement. If we cast our eye out a little further to include other manufacturers like Italieri and Tamiya, although we don't have much information right now, Airfix's position in 2024 looks altogether weaker than it did in 2022 and 2023, which isn't the overall impact I was hoping for. I guess this circles back to my feeling of disappointment, because Airfix has been building momentum, and this year it seems to have lost that momentum and to be coasting a bit, allowing other manufacturers to catch up, and in some cases, overtake them. In fact, if we put some educated guesses into our 2024 figures, including for Airfix, the picture becomes clearer. If we take averages for the past couple of years for the projections for Italieri and Tamiya, for instance, and actually decrease the rate of ICM's current growth, Airfix certainly loses that dominant position it was starting to show. If Italieri and Tamiya do even the same releases as they did in 2023, then the picture looks even weaker for Airfix. Now again, I'm not trying to say that Airfix's release was bad, or that what they're going to release this year won't be excellent. I'm really looking forward to the Liberator, the Eurofighter and Lifeboat starter kits, and I'll be building a build dog too. But, and it's an important but, I don't have that same feeling of impetus and excitement about this range release as I saw from the 2023 and 2022 ranges. 
I am, however, excited to see the new U-boat and speeder bike from Ravel, and I'm really looking forward to the ICM release announcement that will be dropping any day now. So I hope that explains in a bit more detail, and with supporting data and rationale, why I felt disappointed at the Airfix 2024 range announcement. As I've said to many people, it's not that it was a bad release, it's just it was less than I expected. Like getting a C plus grade paper from an A grade student. It's still a good result, but you know they're capable of better. Now I would love this video to age poorly, Airfix to make surprise announcements every three weeks and blow us all away with what it's got behind closed doors, but my question then would be, why not put one of those big hitters in the January announcement? Does making surprise announcements garner more interest? And does that then mean that the old cycle of big January release schedules will give way to a shorter term strategy of quarterly, monthly, or even just surprise releases? Whatever the answer, I think it's healthy to see such competition develop again between model companies, because it only means more models, better quality, and more innovation in our hobby, which I welcome. At the moment, however, we still have some big 2024 release announcements to come, so make sure you're subbed to the channel and have the notification bell set to all to make sure you catch those videos when they drop. That's all for this instalment of Man's Model Moments. If you enjoyed the video, please click the like button, subscribe to the channel for more like it, and share this video with others you think would also enjoy it. You can also follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and if you're feeling generous, then I also have a Patreon, which is absolutely the best way of helping me to grow the channel and produce more content like this. With that, I hope you have plenty of modelling moments of your own, and I look forward to welcoming you on the next video.